And when I, as I reflect on the last couple of years, I realize that there's actually something very subtle about the commission process that I think that maybe people don't really give a lot of careful thought to, and that is that the commission itself is, reflects a very subtle aspect of, of nuclear safety that um, I'd like to talk with you about today. You know, as, as, commission, as a commission goes forward making policy, it, it engages in what become very esoteric debates about, you know, what, how safety is defined, what safety is, what's really safe enough. You know, just recently my colleagues and I spent many hours um, looking at the staff's recommendations over uh, the response to the Fukushima disaster and the various regulatory actions that they had recommended, and we got into this very interesting debate about um, whether to redefine adequate protection or whether to maintain adequate protection. And this was a very, very you know, the, the differences would, it seemed very important at the time, but, you know, it, but it was something I think that we spent a lot of effort on. But what, one of the things that you recognize as you go through these debates is uh, the truth is that safety is not an absolute. Uh, it's true that some people speak about safety with, um, with, with a sort of a, an echo of metaphysical certitude, but it really isn't. The harsh reality is that safety in a world that's inherently unsafe um, is both a subjective and a relative uh, measure. You know, what's considered safe in one country is often unacceptable in another. You know, what was safe in 1952 is now considered hazardous in, in 2012. You know, the NARC, uh, probably more than any other organization in history, has worked to try to tame those ambiguities and to try to take the uncertainty out of those discussions. Uh, people like uh, my esteemed colleague, Commissioner Apostolakis, has spent many, many years trying to quantify risk and safety and put it in terms that you can evaluate and compare in a systematic and consistent fashion. But if, say, if science allows us to um, provide a basis to compare and analyze safety, it doesn't really give you a clear answer to what safety is. That's left to the judgment of policymakers. Uh, policymakers, people who are reflecting the, uh, the values and the mores of, of society that they re represent. In the case of the United States, those standards are really set by elected representatives, uh, people in Congress and, and the, the President. And they reflect their values by appointing people like us, like the Commission. And the five people on the on Nuclear Regulatory Commission today reflect um, the values and mores of the people of the United States at this point in time because of the way the process works. Now, I think this approach has served us very well. The Commission makes judgments based on scientific facts, and when science alone can't provide an absolute conclusion, the, commu the Commission makes judgments based on um, its experience, um, its various points of reference, and, yes, the values of each member. As Commissions evolve over time, uh, these factors evolve as well, and, and also over evolving will be the conclusions, the conclusions reached by the Commission over uh, safety. Uh, some of the precepts stay the same, some are challenged, New thoughts are constantly considered. In our case, uh, this approach has allowed us to make profound changes over the years um, as lessons have been learned through operating experience. But it's also fostered regulatory stability as necessary to allow nuclear technology to be used um, to benefit society. So that process, I think, works and serves us very well. But you know, recently, the Commission undertook a review of our low level waste policies. And we are what, in the U.S., we have a, a part of our regulation, 10 CFR 61, and we spent a lot of time talking about that. And uh, low level waste is an area that hasn't really received a great deal of attention over the recent years. Um, in the U.S., we have an act called the Low Level Waste Radioactive Policy Amendments Act of 1985, which is really the guiding law of the land. Uh, but which also, quite frankly, hasn't entirely been successful. Um, the, the structure that the law had anticipated, a collection of state-run disposal facilities, uh, it simply hasn't occurred uh, in, in large respects the, the act has failed. And uh, what the Commission wanted to do was to undertake uh, some um, update of, this, of, this, of, the, of our, our regulations under this law to reflect the realities of the day, the new waste forms that are out there, uh, the realities of the sites that exist. But as we reviewed the policy aspects of global waste disposal, it was apparent that the most difficult questions facing us were not those related to how best to protect, this, protect the public we serve today, but how the decisions we might make would impact the public and the people over the very long term. Our discussion circling around time frames reaching out to 20,000 years and beyond. So I really began to wonder. Can a framework I spoke of earlier, where it uses people like us to reflect the mores of today's society, really 
represent the interests of future generations? What's our ability to make decisions on their behalf? As a nuclear safety regulatory, what priorities should we place on those issues? Now, while there are many areas in today's society that impact the future, many of the impacts that we are worried about most urgently really have relatively short-term impacts. You know, even things like Social Security, the future of Social Security, or, you know, the state of our education system. These are very important issues, but they really have impacts over the course of decades. The things that we deal with at the NRC have impacts over thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of years. 